visiting, we invite you to sign the guest book that's in our atrium. Or if you're visiting us online, leave us a note in the comments. We're glad that you made your way to us, either in person or online. We have two announcements before we get started. Mike, do you want to go first? Good morning. Good morning. You should all know that we're going to celebrate with a dinner, special dinner for the Barons on the 8th of June, which is a Wednesday at 6.30 at the Lucky Dog Bar and Grill in Beulah. They have graciously allowed us to use their Labrador room, a brand new area where you can do a sizable party. So if you haven't RCB, please do that to Terry as soon as you can. Again, 8 June, 6.30, Lucky Dog Bar and Grill, Beulah, $12 yes. uh, entry fee. <laughs> what you get for your twelve dollars is a taco bar and a salad bar for those who don't like chicken and beef tacos. And uh, there will be a uh, there's a bar there and it's paying you good. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Enjoy. Christian. Um, we are going to have a beautiful cake and coffee, so everyone's invited. If you can't make it to the Labrador room, we hope you can at least stay extra for coffee out. Thanks, Jerry. And then lastly, on May 26th, our bishop wrote a letter to the church. In our tradition, the bishop is the chief pastor, and when they write something to the church, we read it for the faithful to hear, knowing that not all of us have email or check our email <laughs> on the regular. So I will read the letter to you right now, and there are printed copies for you available in the atrium if you'd like to take a copy home with you. It's also available online, so let me know if you'd like me to forward it to you. Dear Saints, Rob Elementary was home to the 27th shooting this year school shooting this year and the 119th school shooting since 2018 in our country. Houston, Uvalde, and Oxford, we have a problem. My brother Bishop in the Episcopal Diocese of Western Michigan writes, what we have to offer is ourselves. We have received power to love and to resist hatred. We can respond to his call with integrity. As I see it, we don't have a Second Amendment problem, but a gun problem. Too many guns and assault, right, assault weapons that are too quickly accessible to people who shouldn't have that sort of responsibility. Stringent universal background checks, red flag laws, safe storage of guns, and a ban on assault weapons can safeguard our children, schools, and communities. We are not the only country in this world with angry people or mental health issues. We are the only country with easy access to guns, including high-powered assault weapons so often used for mass shootings. In our state, firearms are now the number one cause of death for children and youth. Suicides by firearm have reached record levels. No one is safe when our children are regularly killed in schools by assault weapons. We have as many as 400 million firearms in the United States of America. With that kind of access, the only reasonable protection in the civil society is stringent background checks. Most Americans, 90% to be specific, are in favor of universal background checks before someone can buy a gun. It is that simple. What we have here is a national health crisis. Our doctors, nurses, parents, and caregivers are overwhelmed by this human-made crisis. It is also a national security crisis when parents are terrified to send our precious children to school. Anyone running for public office who cannot protect the life of our children by subscribing to universal background checks is not qualified to serve. Thoughts and prayers are as important as our actions. Prayer, prayers help us not become the very thing we're trying to overcome. We cannot turn to anger, bitterness, and hate. We can keep our lawmakers accountable. 
On Holy Week this year, all three Michigan Episcopal bishops, ELCA bishops, and over 140 followers of a loving God lobbied in Lansing for some of these sensible gun laws to be established in our state. We passed the second anniversary of George Floyd's killing on May 25th. The pandemic of racism and the end epidemic of gun violence must be addressed and are addressable regardless of one's political party. I invite us to address them as followers of Jesus with compassion to protect our children from this chronic sickness in the soul of our country. Here are a few steps you can take. Start with being kind to yourself and your neighbor. Breathe. Join End Gun Violence Michigan's Silence for Violence, Silence the Violence March on Saturday, June 4th in Detroit or local marches near you. We have to keep the pressure, my beloved. Yours in Christ, the Right Reverend Prince Singh.
exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. May we see this. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, and as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us Romans to adopt or observe. <clears throat> the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had stripped them of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he was supposed, he was supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 97 responsibly by whole verse. <laughs> The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. The wild is darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. He is like the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears in his lap, and the cities of Judah rejoice, because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of the saints and then delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. 
from the Revelation to John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they will have the right to the tree of life, and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. To be human 
to be affected by the lack of response by the grown-ups responsible for keeping our community safe is to be human. To be affected by the stories that continue to emerge about the nature and power these weapons of war have over even our bravest of men and women who put their lives on the line every day that they put a badge on is to be human. I personally am angry, and my anger is not a Michigan nice kind of anger. I'm angry that my friends who are teachers are having to take time out of their days to teach our littles how to hide and be quiet for the time when an active shooter shows up to their classroom. I'm angry that common sense legislation has been waiting to be taken up for years, and our elected officials think this is a problem to be dealt with elsewhere, not in the political arena. I'm angry that we lack the imagination to provide a world for our children that is free from this kind of assault on their innocence, their freedom, their sense of security and safety. And so I come here today to pray, to lay my anger before the God who put on flesh to show me the way to love, to suspend my thoughts and actions for a few hours and commune with the creator of those children who were slain this week. But do not mistake my prayer for weakness or my tears. It is the well from which I draw the strength to continue to care, to continue to fight, to continue to draw attention to the problems, and to continue to demand action that is swift, meaningful, and comprehensive. In his letter to our diocese this week, which I read at the beginning of the service, Bishop Singh wrote, As I see it, we don't have a Second Amendment problem, but a gun problem. Too many guns and assault weapons that are too quickly accessible to people who shouldn't have that sort of responsibility. Stringent universal background checks, red flag laws, safe storage of guns, and ban on assault weapons can safeguard our children, schools, and communities. He continued, we are not the only country in this world with angry people or mental health issues. We are the only country with easy access to guns including high-powered assault weapons so often used in these mass shootings. In our state, firearms are now the number one cause of death for children and youth. Number one, suicides by firearm, including our community, have reached record levels. This morning's gospel was part three of Jesus' high priestly prayer. Part one was for himself, part two was for his disciples, and part three is for us. For you and for me, for those who will believe in me through their, the disciples' word, that they may be one. Jesus is invoking the mighty prayer of unity for us to be united with him and his first disciples. The ones who were annoyed with the divination spirits and thrown into prison after being flogged for casting the demon out of a human being used to make money for being enslaved not only to her masters but to a spirit that oppressed her autonomy and her personhood. The ones who denied they knew Jesus when the time of his trial came and hid behind locked doors when he was in Hades redeeming every last bit of goodness that had died. The ones who ate grilled fish with him on the shores of the lake along, after a long night of fishing. Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, prayed for you over 2,000 years ago that you also would be one and with one with one another. But not just you and me. He also prayed for those yet to darken the doors and Facebook stream of this place. This prayer is also speaking to your witness and your testimony. In John, we don't hear the word evangelism, really, at all. He uses the language of witness and testimony. The Gospel of John is not a formal essay of Christological statements. It's an experience. It's a conversation. It's meant to nuance and turn our perceptions and preconceived notions about who God was and is and is yet to be and who we were meant to be. 
It's meant to spark theological imagination, wondering, ooing, eyeing. One commentator said, it was as if John had his thesaurus thesaur next to him and asked himself, how many words can I find to help me get at what this feels like for those not yet here? I'm talking about the experience of transformation. Bishop Claude Payne, former bishop of the Diocese of Texas, says that he's interested in hearing these stories of transformation during his rector time at Vestry meetings. Inviting the spiritual leaders of his congregation to reflect on ways they have been transformed as a result of being here, hearing these lessons from our sacred text week after week, communing at the rail with friends, neighbors, and people we agree with and those that we don't. Ways in which the mission of this parish has personally transformed their sense of discipleship, belonging, and inclusion. What does our testimony sound like to those who are watching, I ask, those who are listening? And that leads me to what we do here together on Sundays. The lesson from Acts this morning was about worship. And specifically for these two brutally thrown in jail and the ways in which worship for them was an act of resistance, an act of protest, an act of rebellion. Music to my little rebel heart. What do we say and do when we are participating in acts of resistance, acts of rebellion, acts of protest? For one, we are saying that we don't like the way that something in our common life is going. Maybe it's about the way people are being allowed to treat others, or a policy that seems to be right for some but very much wrong for others. Or maybe it's about drawing attention to the anti-human behaviors people with power are losing over those in their care with verifiably less power. Whatever the protest, whatever the rebellion, whatever the resistance, our bodies are often activated into action long before our cerebral cortex is able to reason with ourselves, right? In 2006, when I witnessed thousands of people gathering in the streets, to protest unjust immigration laws. My body was activated to consider the privilege I had walking with my spouse, toddler, and unborn child in my tummy. The fact that I'll never have to worry about being wrongfully detained because of the color of my skin. I won't have to worry about potentially being deported to a country I've never been to because my parents risked everything for me to have a chance at a better life. I was sad, angry, confused, and activated by the stories I was witness to. In 2014, when I attended my first vigil march to end gun violence, two years after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, my heart was transformed into action for being a part of a solution, rather than throwing my hands up in hopes that 18-year-olds will make better choices and parents will teach their children better. When news spread about the new border control measures being taken to control immigration and children were being ripped from their parents' arms and put into chain-link fenced cages, some never to be reunited, reunited with their parents, I joined others right along this very highway in front of this church to speak out against the injustice of these policies through our presence and our unity. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit and the black community once again arranged ways for America to wake up to our pandemic of racism, I girded my loins and marched through downtown Frankfurt with others, angry at the injustice around us, and called out to God the names of black bodies who'd been victimized by racist policies across America in police departments. Those are just a few of the ways that I have been activated as a priest to use my body in protest, in rebellion, and in resistance on behalf of those who have less power than me. And the courage I had to do such things came from these very texts, these very prayers, the vows I took to become an Episcopalian, the vows I took to become a deacon, then a priest, and this very communion table. You may have noticed that a few weeks ago, Christian and I wore these orange stoles that I don on now. Orange isn't a liturgical color, Mother Jody. And you'd be correct with that statement. 
But this stool was hand sewn for priests and deacons and pastors to wear, to raise awareness about gun violence in America. And we wear it after mass shootings. I'm sick of wearing it, honestly. I'm sick of holding vigils and meetings and writing letters and calling senators. I'm sick of crying every time a line of students walk by or a car line at school displays parents dropping their children off for what might be the very last time they see them. I'm sick of voting at election booths for candidates who promise to do something but get sidetracked by budgets or more pressing issues than gun safety. And yet, I know that I have to begin from a place of prayer so that I remember why my activism, my protest, my rebellion, my resistance matters for the kingdom of God. This week, I invite you to consider writing down a few, or even one, way coming to St. Philip's has transformed your life. I'd love it if you would email them to me, or message them to me, or mail them to me. I'd like to share some of them for Pentecost, my last Sunday with you as director. I hope it gives you strength to keep working on the good work this place has been about, making the circles bigger and bigger, sharing the good news that God loves you, no exceptions, and you belong here. Amen.
We pray also for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Elizabeth, Joy, Trish, Mark, Jim, and Linda. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. For this gathering, our clergy and elected leaders, Christian and Jody, our priests, our vestry and their officers, Mike, Wendy, Barb, Joy, BJ, Harold, Susan, and Denise, and our delegates and alternates to diocesan convention, Mike, Joy, Wendy, and Nancy. We pray for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray also for the families wounded by the events in Rob Elementary School. Pray for justice and peace. Pray for the peace of the family. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of God. In our parish cycle of prayers, we lift up Alice Matson, Bryce, Eric, Carrie, and Ryan McCumber, the families we serve at the baby pantry, and all those who use this space to bring about beauty and healing in your world. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those we name now. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those in need of healing, especially Blanche, Dorothy, Carol, Joanne, Arlene, Barbara, Susan, Preston, Frank, Mark, Elmer, Dave, Don, Maggie, Tom, Ruth, Chris, Matt, and all those who have asked for our prayers. We give God thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Jimmy Brown, Ashley Olstead, Joanne Kittendorf, and Carol Peschke, as they begin another year. And we thank you for the love and witness of those beginning another year of married life. Praise God for those of every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Eucharist at God's table. Our altar is the table of the loving God, the table set to feed all of creation through the love of Jesus Christ. You who are a part of that creation are most welcome, indeed invited to partake. For those joining from home today when it comes time for communion, because you can't be here with us in person, we invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion, which we've included in the bulletin on page 21. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. <clears throat> by his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. subject to evil and death. You and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, <clears throat> Almighty God. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, we serve a loving God, therefore are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith to thanksgiving.
eternal God, the Heavenly Father, you give a gracious day accept us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.